Astrotometry log. It is August 21st, 2010. It's approximately 2111 at the time of this recording. This is a follow-up on the hurricane forecast from the last video. And as I'd mentioned, yesterday at 7.30 p.m., the National Hurricane Center in the United States was tracking two disturbances in the Atlantic, one with a 40% chance of turning into a cyclone and one with a 10% chance. Now, these numbers changed this morning when at 6.52 a.m., there was a 30% chance of Area 2 and a 0% chance of Area 1 turning into a tropical cyclone. Hence, this area fell off the uh, forecast. But later on, the numbers went up. And now we have Tropical Depression 6, which is uh, now having sustained winds of, of 25 knots. And a pressure that is consistent with a tropical depression. And so this is no longer considered to be less than 50%, but now uh, greater than 50% chance of turning into a cyclone. And if you look at the latest images from the Naval Research Laboratory, it already has this cyclonic shape that indicates uh, that a disturbance is uh, forming here. Now, all of the indicators that we have scientifically would lead one to question whether or not this was actually going to happen ahead of time. And so with astrotometry, what I'm offering is the source of this disturbance that had it been seen back on the 18th, might have been something that could have been watched for. This isn't anything to be concerned about. This is just new information that we're learning about the nature of the world. And these events, these coronal mass ejections, while they look like they're moving in other directions, the energy that they're disturbing in the magnetic field is energy that is wound up around the sun. In other words, there is this model that the modern solar scientists have of this current sheet. And the, the electromagnetic energy actually sort of orbits the sun in spirals just like a planet would as, as it uh, moves out towards the Earth. And so there's a disturbance that is happening in the sheet itself from the particles that are moving through the sheet. And so the particles might move through the sheet and not hit the Earth, but as the sheet winds back around to the Earth, the part of the sheet that has been disturbed arrives back at the Earth at a later time. And so this is the model that I'm currently uh, presenting in the three-dimensional version of astrotometry. Now, in astrotometry, as I pointed out before, um, this is not what it appears to be. And what is happening on the molecular level, on the atomic level, this is a sort of nuclear reaction that's happening on the level of quantum foam that we perceive as these changes in formation of clouds and de de the depression, the tropical depression, the changes in the density and the pressure um, because of this. And so this is something that is actually happening at a distance, but because of the nature of material continuity as it relates to energy, as it relates to the relationship between matter and energy and its continuum through time, we are noticing these sorts of uh, cyclonic aberrations. And so this is a, a, a very interesting phenomenon, and I'm watching this one very closely because of the extended solar minimum. And so there's this decrease that has been noticed in the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, back in 2008, NASA reported that the Earth's ionosphere is 220 kilometers closer to Earth than it had been previously measured. And these contractions have been known about for a long time, but this is a very, very deep contraction. And technically, the, the, the distance to outer space is now between 17 and 34 uh, percent closer. And so this was back in 2008. And the solar minimum continued uh, through 2008, through most of 2009, and then, and then towards the beginning of 2010, we saw it stay back up. But now, the, the sunspot number uh, currently is zero again. So we're back to this uh, zero sunspot day, 
And so that you could say that the, this shrinkage, whatever it, whatever it translates into, is continuing. And so we have this continuing of the shrinking of the atmosphere. And recently, uh, John Emmerich of the Naval Research Laboratory was interviewed by CNN, and he's talking about the troposphere here. We cannot explain the abnormally low densities, which are about 30% lower than from previous contractions. Emirate told CNN.com. They go on to say, the thermosphere interacts strongly with the sun and hence is greatly influenced by the sun's solar activity, which occurs in cycles. And so there's been a lot of concern in the uh, solar physics community about this extended minimum. And this may be something that is completely normal. We don't have enough data. We don't have enough information to know what the long-term effects of this are. And so I am just pointing out a new connection between the coronal mass ejection and the formation of these tropical cyclones. And so from a, the perspective of astrotometry, um, now that the correlation is known between this disturbance and the tropical depression six, it's only a matter of how large it's going to get. I had compared this particular disturbance to the disturbance of tropical storm Emily back in 2005. But depending on this other factor, depending on how the, the changes in the atmospheric density, which are completely related to things like pressure differentials, uh, relate to the formation of these storms, we might see a larger ejection with a smaller or equivalent sort of storm that comes from it. And so I'm not looking for a category five storm out of this, even though this is consistent with what we would have seen as a category five storm back towards the, the downside back here in 2005, back when the atmosphere was puffed up from the solar maximum, back when the density was a lot higher from the solar maximum. I'm not expecting that sort of category of storm just because of these other factors. And so I wanted to follow up with that and let everyone know that we now have a disturbance that is, according to the National Hurricane Center, probably going to turn into a hurricane. Thanks for watching and following along.